What's going on everybody? This is Jeff with Living in Arizona and today we're going to talk about the people of Arizona, things to know about people in Arizona. And yeah, this is a question that comes up. People want to know what kind of people there are across the state and if you're doing your research, maybe you want to know because you want to meet some of them or who knows what your reasoning could be for wanting to know what the people of Arizona are like. But this question's come up quite a few times. So let's go ahead and dial this in and take a look at some of these subjects. So, before we even get started, people from Arizona are commonly called zonies. That's the term. If you look at the end of the word Arizona, you get the reason why they're called zonies. And it's kind of like uh, Cali, you know, um, New Yorker. It's basically on the same line. Now, there are also other terms that are used like desert rats and stuff like that. But for the most part, um, Phoenicians, if you're from Phoenix, uh, Tucson, Tucsonians, uh, if you're from Tucson, Tuxans, <laughs> um, people would call it, it's actually pronounced Tucson, but you know, Tuxan, it's got that C in the middle. And then if you're from the North, you know, it depends on if you're living on a native, uh, American reservation or whatnot. So let's go ahead and talk about some of the things to know about the demographics of Arizona so you get an idea of what that looks like first and foremost. So the majority of the ethnic and racial composition of Phoenix as of the 2010 census, right? This is Phoenix only, um, was 65% white, 6.5% black, African American, 2.2% uh, Native American, 3.2% Asian, and then uh, the rest is Native American. Native Hawaiian and Pacific Islander at 0.2% and other races 0.1%. And then the main uh, non-American uh, demographic from outside of the United States that lives in the United States or in Arizona or in Phoenix is Hispanic or Latino. So people who are not from the United States, there is a population of about 40% Hispanic or Latinos, people who have become or have moved to the United States, whether they are um, living here permanently or just working here or documented is about 40% of those people, right? Now, <clears throat> that's 45.6% of the white population is non-Hispanic. So some of the Hispanic population is considered white. Okay, so let's go ahead and dial this in and look at some of the other things besides the demographics, which those are the demographics. I mean, that's what the census reports and we're just passing on the, the demographics. And, you know, also, if you wanted to know about the religious aspect of it, 35% of the religion is Catholic. So the majority of people in Phoenix are Catholic, followed by evangelical Protestant, and then actually 16% of Latter-day Saints, LDS, 14% non-denominational, and then 2% of Hindu and 4% other religions. So for the most part, people in Phoenix or in Arizona in general are uh, Christian. Okay, so who are some famous people to come from Arizona? So if you want to know about some of the famous people, um, I know that Steven Spielberg went to high school in, I believe, Chaparral in Scottsdale. You know, famous, uh, one of the world's greatest uh, directors. I believe that David Spade grew up here. Um, if you're into movies, you know about those guys, right? And then there's some other people like, um, uh, there's some historical people, people like Cesar, Cesar Chavez. He was a, um, a labor leader, a farmer who led a uh, movement to get more rights for farmers. Cochise, he was a Native American chief. And then also really famous one, Geronimo. For those of you who've heard of Geronimo, he was an Apache. Both actually Cochise and Geronimo are Apaches, but Geronimo was really one of the more famous ones. And they were down in, I want to say, Chiricahua, or yeah, down in the south. I don't know. I think it was the Chiricahua area down there. Or Chiricahua or another tribe. I don't know why I said Chiricahua. I, I was watching some documentary about uh, the Apaches and Geronimo. They, they have these areas around Arizona called Apache strongholds. And what a stronghold was, was where the Apaches really uh, secured that area. So there's a place out here in Phoenix called Apache Junction. I don't know the exact history between um, the strongholds, 
and the Apaches, but they call them Apache strongholds. I believe there was one out by Lake Pleasant and then obviously some down in Southern Arizona. The reason the Apaches were so famous and so world renowned is because of their extremely uh, ten tenacious fighting spirit and how much they were able to battle back against the cavalry, which made them um, world renowned uh, in, Coach in Geronimo too. Other, other people that are famous from here, Barry Goldwater. Um, he was, he's an American, he was a politician, I believe he also ran for president. Then there was a very famous architect who has a imprint on Phoenix, Frank Lloyd Wright. There's also Carl Trumbull Hayden. If you ever are driving on Hayden Road, now you know it's Carl Hayden. Uh, Frank Luke, named after Luke Air Force Base. He was a, or he, the Luke Air Force Base is named after him. He was a World War I fighter ace. Um, Linda Ronstadt, she's from Tucson. Carrie Strug, she's a gymnast from Tucson. Uh, we've got other ones, but uh, you get the idea. Also, Michael Carbajal, for those of you who remember boxing back in the day, Michael Carbajal. If, if you wanted to look at some of the athletes who chose to settle down here, you have Kurt Warner. I believe Charles Barkley still comes back here. Uh, Ken Griffey Jr., Michael Jordan even explored having a house here. So there's been, you know, it, pro, it's, it's got these nice areas that are affluent that draws people in, kind of like how California, Hawaii, and Florida do also, right? So what are some other things that you should know about Arizona, right? Uh, or about the people of Arizona, right? So you have, these, these are kind of like the, the types of people that are going to come here. East Coast, Midwestern transplants. We'll also use the word snowbirds, people who come from snow areas and they settle here. So you're going to have your snowbirds. These are people who only live here seasonally. And then you have your transplants, people who say, you know what, forget this. I'm just going to live in Phoenix or Arizona year round. Then you have the reluctant transplant, the person who moved to Arizona reluctantly. They're like, damn it, I moved to Arizona. And there, those people do exist as with any state, whether it's California or anywhere. I mean, I, I've never been to a place where there wasn't reluctant people that were living there, even locals. You also have Arizona natives, born and raised in the state. These people are rare to find depending on where you live. Let me just say this. I was born in Arizona. I was raised in Arizona until I was 20, and then I left, but I didn't know I was a rare breed. <laughs> I mean, I did live other places, I guess, uh, so whatever. Um, indigenous peoples. We talked about this, the indigenous peoples. If you wanted to know about the tribes that come from here, you have the Apache, the Pima, the Pai Paiute, Colorado River Indian tribes. Those are uh, like the ones down there in the Grand Canyon area where you have uh, Havasupai and stuff. And then you have the Pasqua Yaqui uh, tribe, Quichon, uh, Yavapai Prescott tribe, Hal Chidoma. Uh, the, the, the ones not being mentioned on this list are the Navajo people, the Navajo, the Hopi, um, like I mentioned earlier, the Chiricahua. Um, so these are just different tribes across here, but th that's the large That's the large list of it, right? But you could also dial it into Ak Chin, uh, Coco Paw. Uh, there's so many. So indigenous peoples. There's a lot of indigenous reservations out in Arizona. I believe Arizona is the largest state for that. So uh, native. Native American reservations, a lot of them are here in Arizona. That's something that you can uh, pay attention to, right? Now, let's keep looking at some of the other types of people that you might bump into when you're out here. We talked about this, Mexican and Spanish descent. There's a lot of people from Mexico, uh, Latin America, whether it be Guatemala, Honduras, not so much South America. I, I, I rarely bump into Brazilians. I've been to places where I bumped into Brazilians and Argentinians, and stuff like that, like Florida, I would I would come across Brazilians, and I, or I know there's Brazilians there in Argentina. There's also when I was living in San Diego, I met a lot of people from Brazil. I made friends with a lot of them. That's how I know I was like, what's going on here? There's a lot of people from Brazil. I mean, obviously, San Diego is more than Brazilians. It just seems like I was always meeting Brazilians. Brazilians and me are kind of like we always meet. <laughs> I always meet Brazilians everywhere. But um, I also meet other people too. But it just seemed like I had some sort of like. What's going on with me in Brazil? <laughs> and I've never been to Brazil, but I have, I had like two different sets of roommates that were both from Brazil. Uh, two, two different sets of girls that lived in my house. Uh, 
Okay, so cowboys, cowgirls, and ranchers. I guess you could say that you're going to have this, but like places like New River and then out in the outskirts, and then obviously Prescott's known for the rodeo. Payson has the rodeo. So like I said, cowboys, cowgirls, and ranchers. Uh, we already touched on the um, snowbirds. And then you have this like new age movement, which is in pretty much every state, but Arizona's new agers are a little bit more, well, they're not too much more different than anywhere else. They're new agers, you know? <laughs> um, Sedona is a big place for new agers. Vegan, it, the new age culture is pretty much uh, be vegan, have a low carbon footprint, and do yoga, be in touch with a higher consciousness, and, you know, basically that. Follow them. That's what the New Agers want to be known for, is the ones who are teaching you how to be more eco-friendly, right? And some would say that New Agers are, are, are a bit pretentious. For me, in my experience, I think everyone's got a, a role. So I think that I've learned from New Agers, but I don't... Um, what I say, I've learned, I, I observe what they're doing and, uh, you know, the vegan stuff and all that. It's interesting. I mean, it's, you're going to come across these people, okay? They're, they're going to be into sustainability, okay? Crazy drivers. You got these crazy drivers, right? That's everyone but you, you know? Everyone's a crazy driver but you, right? Like, you only know... You only know about the times that you're yelling at other people on the road, but you don't exactly get to see what's going on in the car behind you because you've got your music on and you can't hear what's going on in their car, so you don't know how many people are cussing you out every single day for driving crazy, thinking that it's everyone else, right? So yeah, that's pretty much the types of people you'll bump into around Arizona. At the clubs and stuff, you're going to bump into, uh, if you're in Tempe, you're going to bump into college kids, obviously, down on Mill Avenue. And people who just love to party and be around college kids go down to Mill Avenue. And it's just a fun, young, vibrant uh, place with lots of nightclubs. As you go up Scottsdale Road, you start to enter into the... If, if Phoenix had a red light district, it might be on Scottsdale Road where the cabarets are. They also say down Van Buren. But, um, you know, as you go up into Scottsdale, you start to come into the Old Town Scottsdale, which is going to be a little bit older demographic in, say, Prescott. You're going to bump into more cowboys down on Whiskey Row. Flagstaff has a mix between uh, college kids at Northern Arizona University and then the older people who are locals there, right? They go out to the uh, nightclubs. Tucson's going to have college and then it's going to have locals and then it's going to have, you know, the cowboys a little bit because you got Old Town Tucson, right, where the westerns were filmed. And then, you know, it just depends on where you're going. But that's, for the most part, that's Phoenix and Arizona's population. Uh, outside of nightclubs, you have diehard Arizona Cardinals fans, uh, which are kind of dying off right now because, you say diehard, because so only the strong Arizona Cardinals fans support them through thick and thin. Right now, the Cardinals are not a very good football team, but you have that culture of the go Cardinals, get them, they call them the cardiac cards. Um, yeah, those Cardinal fans are, are wild, right? They're, they're, they're a growing fan base. It's a new fan base. It's not like the, the Bears or the Packers fan base because Cardinals used to be a terrible football team in the 90s. And then after Kurt Warner came to town, we went to the Super Bowl. It changed the whole, the whole scene, right? You also have Phoenix Suns fans. The Diamondbacks don't really have a culture like they used to in the early 2000s, but they're getting ready to come back up. You also have sports Families like soccer, not soccer mom kind of stuff, but more like baseball moms and baseball dads and stuff like that. So you have those coaches, those co parent coaches who are really extreme into the into the sports. You have those kind of people that uh, really get into sports and like their kids to be the best of the best. And, they, you know, they yell at the games and they get real passionate about what their kids are doing. And that's mostly sports related. So you got a whole variety of different things just depending on what you're you're into. If you're a parent or if you're single or if you're um, a, a business person. For business environments, you know, you're going to have these massive corporations with thousands of people that work at these complexes and you're going to be a part of that culture where you're going to be going to these conferences and participating in these things that these massive corporations do, right? Corporate. We have those here. I, th I think uh, Nationwide's building a complex. You already have that Tesla competitor here. 
Um, for the electric cars, you have uh, GoDaddy, which is another interesting company, right? So I just wanted to make this video. Hope it made some sense. I know there's a lot to know about the demographics, but I know you guys wanted to know. So that's why I put it out there to answer the question. I do read the comments. Thanks to everyone who's been liking the videos and subscribing to Living in Arizona, and we'll see you next time.